So when you first open ZBrush, this is what you'll be greeted with. A um, lot of buttons. This menu here, which uh, not entirely clear how you get rid of. And it's just, it's just a lot to look at, which is a bit annoying. So um, the first thing that we as beginners tend to figure out is that you can get rid of this menu here by pressing either comma or this button, the light box button. And then we're like, great, let's start sculpting, let's go. And then you get greeted with the dreaded ZBrush square. This kills beginners hopes and dreams of becoming great sculptors. So um, don't fret when you run into this. I'll show you how to start an actual document and start sculpting. So instead of just um, closing the light box and then trying to start sculpting here, we're just going to open one of these default projects. So obviously it'll depend uh, which one you want to start with, uh, depending on what kind of project you want to do or what kind of sculpt you want to do, but we're going to start on uh, Dynamesh Sphere just because it's easiest. So if your light box isn't on the project menu here, um, it could either be in one of these. You just want to click this and then you'll be shown all the different projects. And for now, we're just going to double click Dynamesh Sphere. It could be any of these sphere looking things, but we're going to just click this one here. And now we can sculpt. Yay! So before we start doing the sculpting, you can play around with it for now if you want, but um, one of the most important things that we need to get to grips with is the navigation. To rotate your camera, it's right click, so right click and hold, you don't have to press any buttons. Or you could left click outside of the mesh. Because if I left click in the mesh, I start sculpting, if I'm outside of the mesh, I can still rotate it. So this is mainly useful when you're using a pen. Um, so you, with your pen, you can still just use your left click in quotation marks on the outside and you can still rotate it. To pan the camera around, you hold Alt and right click. Again, same with being outside of the mesh, you can hold Alt and left click. Um, but the main one is Alt and right click. You can do that anywhere, even if you're hovering over the mesh. So that's two of the most important things. We have our rotate and we have our pan. And then the final thing is our zoom. So this is definitely the most finicky one. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold alt, hold right click. So now you're panning and then you're going to let go of alt. And suddenly with right click still held down, you can zoom in and out. So it is very, very weird to do when you're first starting out. But trust me, the more you use ZBrush, um, the more motor memory kicks in, it just feels a lot more uh, natural to do. So now I'm going to introduce you to the gizmo. So if you've used 3D softwares before, like Maya, Blender, um, you'll be able to use a gizmo that moves your mesh around. Um, here we obviously don't have one, but if we press W, we can see the gizmo. Uh, you can also press one of the buttons up here. Um, so this goes back to draw mode and this goes back to bringing up the gizmo. And then you can move your meshes around, which is nice. So this outer gray part lets you move it in any sort of direction. So you can use it diagonally, you can use it up and down. Um, that's happening just because I have symmetry on, but um, that one's useful. And then this outer gray circle lets you rotate it on the axis you're viewing the um, the mesh on. So I'm rotating it this way, as opposed to having it be kind of uniform in each direction with these, with the different colors. And finally, these uh, boxes here are for scale. So the central yellow box here is for uniform scale across the model. And then these are for all the different axes. Cool, so now you're probably thinking, Tina, I wanna sculpt. That's why I'm in ZBrush right now. So let's get sculpting then. So with the standard brush selected here in the top left, this is where your brushes will live. Um, if we start sculpting, which is with left click, you can see that the mesh kind of comes out. And if we wanna do the opposite, we hold Alt and left click and it goes inward. So this is the foundation of sculpting in 
the software. The next tool you need to know as well is the smooth tool. So if you hold shift, this will smooth out your mesh. So you can make a few different changes and then be like, oh, I just want to smooth out this gradient a bit more. And then you just smooth it out like that. To change your brush size, you can either come up here and use this slider to change it and it'll change it effectively like that. Or you could press S. This is one of my favorite things in ZBrush. If you press S, it automatically brings up the slider right where your cursor is. So you can either click and drag left or click and drag right. And it's just a really, really quick way of changing your brush size and it just makes your workflow really fast. So I'd um, try and get your muscle memory into that as fast as possible. I'm going to use this slider here at the top, which is basically your undo history. So you can kind of see all the different uh, steps I made to get to this point here. So I'm just going to put it to the beginning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the next brush that I want to introduce you to, the move tool. Another quick tip is to change your brushes. You can press B and it'll open the brush menu for you. Uh, but another really cool thing about ZBrush is that if you press the first, generally it's the first initials of the brush name, but say I wanted to use the move brush, I would press B, M, V, move. And now I'm on the move brush. Um, so again, just like changing the size of your brush, there are really, really quick ways to do everything faster, which will come more naturally down the line when you're more experienced with the software, but it's good to just train yourself early on to be able to use it just so you have a nicer time whilst you're using this great software. So yeah, move. B, M, V. B, M, V. So now I have the move brush. Um, just ensure that your symmetry is on as well. So symmetry is a really important aspect of sculpting as well, digital sculpting. Um, as it just quickens your workflow so you don't, you know, if you're making a human and you're doing one eye at a time, it's just very slow. So you can add imperfections later. But for now, to turn it on, it's X. To turn it off, it's X as well. Again, really nice shortcuts. So let's create something really, really, really basic, like, um, like a pear, for example. With the move tool selected, I'm going to use a really big brush size to get the general shape of a pear going. Um, and in this section as well, I'm going to teach you about Dynamesh. So Dynamesh is um, a bit, bit complicated for, well, not really, not necessarily, but uh, a bit complicated for beginners to understand, but um, I'll just try and demonstrate it as good as possible to you here. Okay, so we have like, a kind of pear shape here. <laughs> Can you see already we see some stretching of the polygons so to view the wireframe of your mesh you can click this button here draw a polyframe or use shift f. Again very useful shortcut to know. Um, but yeah say I wanted to give him some arms. <laughs> I'm gonna drag his stuff out and oh god that's really awful that's ugly. So this isn't the best. You could maybe try and smooth it out, but but no, it's just going back to where it wants to go, which is have a uniform mesh here. So how can I keep the uniformness of the topology? For that, you're going to use Dynamesh. So this project's already in Dynamesh mode, but if you have a mesh where Dynamesh isn't enabled, you just have to navigate to, on the right here, Geometry, Dynamesh. So you click it and then you click this button and then boom, uniform geometry. So now when I move this again, if I want to make this all uniform again, all I have to do is hold control and drag outside of the mesh. It dynameshes it again. So this is a great way to block out all of your different features really quickly. So again, that's drag out, hit control, click and drag outside the mesh and you have your brand new topology which makes it a lot easier to sculpt into. I decided I want to give this pair some legs so I'm going to use the move tool again and I'm going to drag some out this looks quite cute and then I'm going to dynamesh it. 
kind of want to give this pair a little thumb just as a demonstration of one of my other favorite tools which is the damn standard brush so to get to it it's take a guess actually i'll give you three seconds damn standard so it's b d s b damn standard and i'm just gonna put a little <laughs> put a little thing there so yeah as you can guess this tool basically creates a sort of indent and it's one of the most important brushes in ZBrush. It helps you define areas and again if you hold alt it does the opposite so you can really really define areas that you've indented. And once again when you've changed the mesh quite a lot you can click and drag and then dynamesh it again. And now I'm going to introduce you to the Zebra Mesher tool. So this is one of the other really good features of ZBrush. Essentially what this does is it creates some topology that follows the curvature of your mesh. Unlike Dynamesh where it just kind of creates topology to follow the form and make it all uniform. But if we test it out now, so say we just click the Zebra Mesh button here, see what happens. Look at that beautiful, beautiful topology. So again, it follows the curvature of your mesh as opposed to having it just be straight across like that and then just having kind of jagged topology. So if you're new to 3D, this might not make too much sense right now, but you'll get a better understanding down the line when you're doing a lot of sculpting. You're seeing how different types of topology patterns can influence how you sculpt. So now I'm just going to turn the target poly count a bit lower here. I'm going to z remesh it again. So now I can introduce you to the final two things that um, will help you get started in ZBrush, which is the masking function. So masking is very important. We can use it in combination with the gizmo or with move tool or anything else, basically to edit the things we want to edit and leave the things we don't want to edit. And we can manipulate the mask to make it softer so it's not as jagged. Very, very cool. To use them, we hold control. By default, the mask pen is selected as the mask brush. So this is me holding control right now. So you can draw a mask onto the mesh. And at the same time, if you click and drag outside of the mesh, you can use box selection. So obviously if I'm trying to mask the front here, it's not going to be masked there. But if I wanted to just mask the whole thing, I'll use the box masking. So yeah, say I wanna make this guy's legs a bit longer, I can, mask it with the box select and then I can hold control and click outside of the mesh and that inverts the mask. This is a really important feature so with this you can basically select anything you want. You can select things like this and then invert it and then you can work off of it like that but for now we're just going to select the legs then we're going to feather the mask so to do that we hold control just remember holding control is generally all your mask tools and mask functions so hold control and click and you feather the mask so now if i extend it it's a lot more feathered and it's not um super sharp like this where it ruins the topology say i want to have these legs be something I can select very easily so I don't have to keep on masking them all the time. I'm now going to introduce you to polygroups. So polygroups have an entire drop down menu here um, but the most simple way to use them as a beginner is to use the mask function. We use the mask function and mask the legs off and we hit Control and W. When we have polyfill selected we can see them and that has basically made a group of polygons that are now selectable. So to access polygroup functions we hold control and shift. So control and shift and when we click on either of the polygroups we can hide and unhide different parts of the mesh. So again you can imagine why that would be really useful for really complicated meshes and to really utilize this for its full potential you can shift and control click these polygons and then if you use mask you can select this 
and then unhide everything by pressing control and shift and clicking outside of the mesh so that reveals everything again. So that's control, shift, and just a normal click. And now, without having to use the masking tool, you've masked all of the polygons in that polygroup. So now you can move things around. So now that you have a good idea of how to navigate, how to use the gizmo, um, some general brushes and stuff, I'd recommend you just try and sculpt something. Try and sculpt something really, really, really basic, like an apple or a pear or a pumpkin. A pumpkin's good. Another thing I want to mention is if you increase this slider here in Dynamesh, you can increase the resolution of your topology. So if I click and drag now, as you can see, there's a lot more polygons. So with a higher poly count, that means you can do a lot more fine tuned sculpting. So I can add a few more little lips and stuff that you would see on a pumpkin. The final thing I want to mention is subdivisions. So when you have a mesh that's Z remeshed with a nice and even topology like this, well, this topology is a bit janky actually, but you can subdivide it using geometry here and click divide. And what that does is it keeps this lowest subdivision. So it means that you can very easily move things around if you don't like it, but it allows you to add a few more intricate details. And then if I go a bit higher, divide, Again, it gets even more detailed and then even higher. And finally, you can add some really, 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 really intricate details like that. Um, obviously, this is just a demonstration. It doesn't look the best, but you get the idea. So now, if I wanted to move anything around, if I wanted to make this super big. If I go back to my highest subdivision, all of the intricate details have remained. So yeah, that's the basics of ZBrush.